Hi, this is Humbled Woman Ministries. I'm just doing a really quick video testimony using my phone, so you'll have to excuse me uh, if it's a little shaky. Um, my regular camera that I've done some of the other videos on is not that great. So I thought I would come outside and enjoy the sunshine and um, tell you a little bit about my testimony, if you're interested. Um, well, let's see, I was raised by a single parent. Um, my mom, she um, had a little bit of a hard time. Um, I think she had uh, some issues. Uh, she was extremely um, verbally and emotionally abusive and um, sometimes physical as well. And um, so I had an extremely difficult childhood. I could really get into that for like hours, but I'm not going to. Um, so I grew up, I moved out. Oops, sorry about that. And I got a job and I'm out of place uh, about the time I turned 21. And um, I've worked ever since. Um, I think a lot of my past sin dealt with relationships. I was always looking for love, the love I didn't get from my mom, love I did not receive from my father because he was absent. And so I think I was um, involved in a lot of relationships, uh, hoping to find uh, love that way. And of course, never found it. Um, let's see, I became a Christian in 2002 and met my ex-husband and we got married. Um, he was an alcoholic and I was not, I was very <clears throat> naive about the whole situation. I realized he drank beer every night, but I didn't realize the extent of it until after we were already married and then it became very bad. Uh, seriously drunk every night um, you know peeing on the floor not knowing where he was one time he fell and hit his head and split his eye open and I had to take him to the emergency room so it was bad and then it got worse because I started um, pretty much begging him to get some help and um, he would not do it and he became physically abusive with me and I filed for divorce and um, my church was not uh, super supportive of that. Um, in fact, they stopped talking to me and that was a very painful time of my life. Um, I felt very betrayed by Christians who I thought were supposed to love me and care about me and instead um, they were extremely judgmental and misguided. Uh, I really felt like at one point my ex-husband had tried to kill me so remaining married to somebody that's done that in my mind was insane um, however uh, I did lose um, a lot of my church family at that point once I decided to get a divorce um, so moving forward I um, have been a single parent now for four years I um, mostly just work and stay at home and take care of my daughter and um, just kind of lead a normal life. I don't date, I don't uh, fornicate, I don't have any sins like that in my, in my current history. Um, I believe a lot of that is because uh, I really felt like God has said, you know, I think it's probably just best if you're uh, alone. And um, so I am, and I'm fine with that. Um, I've just been very blessed the past few years. I feel like um, after the divorce, I kind of wandered away from the Lord. And it kind of took a series of <clears throat> unfortunate events to kind of get me back on track with the Lord. Excuse me, I have to change arms here. Um, I, uh, in one year... Uh, my mom passed away and I had a stroke from this freaky heart condition that it turns out that I had 
and um, it was just really kind of overwhelming and I went through um, a period of um, just being really depressed and really down and um, you know I think that's has a lot to do with the fact that I was doing some things I probably shouldn't have been doing and was hanging around people I shouldn't have been hanging around with and I just really feel like it was you know kind of God's way of um, waking me up uh, and so anyway to make a long story short you know I certainly have done a hundred thousand things that I regret and I have sinned um, big time and ultimately you know the love that I was looking for in life can only be found through Jesus he's the one that um, is gonna love us unconditionally he's the one that's gonna cleanse us of our unrighteousness and he's the one that is always gonna be there for us he says I'll never leave you and I'll never forsake you and he never will and um, I had a big trust issue with God because it kind of had seemed that everybody in my life that I had ever loved had let me down or hurt me in some way. So I really struggled for a time period with the understanding that God wasn't people and that his love is not the same as the love that comes from another person. His love is uh, eternal and uh, unconditional and um, there's nothing that anything I could do that would separate me from the love of God. Um, and so once I understood that, I uh, changed a lot. And um, I spend a lot of time studying. Um, I'm really interested in Bible study and learning new things and reading different books. Um, I f have a hard time finding other people that are interested in discussing a lot of the stuff that I read. Uh, just because there's not a lot of Christians around where I le live and the people that go to churches and stuff um, a lot of times they seem to be very surface and so you know they're all about God on Sunday but then the rest of the week um, they're not really interested in talking about the book of Enoch or what Chuck Missler said in his latest book or blah 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 they, they just don't know they don't care and so I think I spend, you know, quite a bit of time just by myself, uh, reading and studying, and uh, I'm a thoughtful person, so I think a lot about stuff. Um, I think uh, God woke me up to the hour that we're living in about three years ago, and um, it kind of was overwhelming. Uh, it started with the disappearance of that M MH370 airplane. And I had been thinking about that a lot, and I don't know why at that particular time, I think God chose to, you know, be like, hey, guess what? Uh, do you know what time it is? You know, kind of thing. But he did, and then from that point on, I just came across, like, tons of information, and I felt like it was just like a download of stuff over the next six months, and it was um, really kind of overwhelming. And so um, at that point, I started looking for, you know, ministries that were awake because the churches uh, locally seemed to be very asleep and didn't seem to quite um, connect the dots with, you know, Bible prophecy and, and, you know, the kind of things that are going on in the world today. And so I really kind of, you know, hungered for that kind of um, camaraderie with people that were also... Um, aware of you know the hour so that is kind of when I um, found some end time stuff on YouTube and I would was watching things uh, like from Anita Fuentes and some other people and you know as time kind of went on I kind of um, realized that some of them were off track, like way off track. <laughs> and so I kind of just uh, decided that uh, I should probably stop listening. And uh, so I didn't listen for very much for the past year and a half. I've just mostly been doing my own Bible study and, you know, kind of um, diving into some subject matter that interests me and, and just trying to kind of 
grow my knowledge and understanding uh, so that I didn't have to depend on other people to provide it for me. And I think that's really um, kind of the mistake that a lot of us make is that we, you know, seek out somebody to kind of explain this stuff with us or to put it in perspective for us or to, you know, help us understand some things that maybe are just really un-understandable. Un and um, so I think it's uh, very important, you know, when we're feeling like that, that rather than, you know, searching for individuals to uh, provide that context for us, that we really just, you know, search for ourselves um, and look uh, for some knowledge and understanding ourselves so that, you know, um, we can have our own understanding because the Holy Spirit will provide that understanding to you. You know, um, Joe Smith on YouTube doesn't have to uh, explain it to you. You can uh, find, figure it out for yourself. Sorry, my hair is driving me nuts. Um, so anyway, so, you know, I never really was a YouTuber. Uh, I did the Anita Fuentes videos because, um, you know, like I said, I did used to listen to her ministry. At one point I did give to her, um, even though I really didn't have uh, the means. Um, but uh, when the house thing came out, I was pretty upset. And so <clears throat> I decided that I would do those videos and I think I did them in like a reasonable way I didn't um, mock or or anything I mean I just was trying to kind of lay out all the information in a rational intelligent way and uh, so that's why I did those and um, you know I have had some comments from people you know different you know as you can imagine you do videos people comment uh, and um, you know the funny thing about that is <laughs> you know I really doubt they would say that kind of st some of the stuff they've said to my face but they certainly don't think you know twice about posting it in a comment so it's really kind of an interesting study of human nature but anyway so that's essentially my testimony um, I and, you know, as far as the ministry thing, um, ministry really just is, if you look it up, a, a service. Sorry, my low power mode's coming on. And so I, I, I'm not a pastor. I don't oversee a church. Um, I don't have headship or authority over any men. I just, uh, these little videos are my way of doing ministry. Um, and so that's, you know, the, the way that I am doing it. Um, so anyway, for those of you who've come on and, and been of great encouragement to me and, um, and that I really, really appreciate it. Um, and for the rest of you who have been kind of mean, um, you know, it's okay. I mean, I forgive you. Um, there's no reason to be ugly to one another though. And I see a lot of ugliness right now, uh, especially between people that call themselves believers. And it's really discouraging and really disheartening. And you know, here's the thing, um, we don't all have to agree on every single little thing. Um, but I think we should be kind. Um, and you know, calling out someone's sin, sin isn't unkind. In fact, it's quite the opposite. It's the kindest thing that you can do. But when we resort to like name calling and you know, everybody's satanic and everyone's demonic. I mean, that's just ridiculous, guys. Come on, let's knock that stuff off, okay? So anyway, uh, I hope you enjoyed my testimony. Um, I may or may not be doing more videos. Uh, I'm pretty busy, but I will try to do a couple of things I have in mind. So um, for those of you who uh, are checking out my videos, thanks. And hey, it's a beautiful day. I think I'm gonna go for a walk and uh, talk to you later. Bye.